so that's that's me. Um, I'm going to make some introductions now of some of the folk you'll see in the little squares on your screen in the next few hours. I'm going to start with our executive ministry team, who is Shannon McCarthy. Wave, Shannon. Uh, our executive minister for Living Skies Regional Council, and Jamie McKay, who is the executive, regional executive assistant. She's taking minutes today. Um, so she will be, she's somewhere uh, doing her thing, which is awesome. She, there she is. Uh, we love Jamie. We have our regional council staff who is here. Uh, Kent Moan is our youth and young adult ministry minister. Uh, we have Deb. Bev Dybert, the administrators for support or otherwise the teacher in charge taking roll call today. Tracy Martin, pastoral relations slash comedian extraordinaire. Um, I don't know if Madeline is here. She's our archivist. Did Madeline decide to join us? Yep, I'm here. Yeah, Madeline, there you are. She's our archivist. Uh, Heather Dutoff is our uh, finance administration. Julie Graham is Justice and Communications. I think that's the name we've settled on for your role now, right, Julie? The gathering, the regional gathering planning team was made up of Daryl Rainey, Rob Reed, Hoen Lee, and Bonnie Morton. And we have some very special guests joining us from far away. We have Alan Hall from General Counsel. Hi, Alan. Karen, is Karen Medlin, and did she come, Shannon? Yeah, Karen Medlin's here. She's from the Office of Vocation. And Nikki, now, uh, Vicki Nelson, sorry, the Financial Development Officer for Western Canada, otherwise known as our Stewardship Enthusiast. There they are. Everybody wave. <laughs> so those are some of our uh, uh, special guests and some of our regular faces, but these folk are here to walk with us this week and as we do this meeting together. Uh, Daryl's going to also try to be a comedian at the same time. So friends, welcome. And here's the official formal opening of our regional council meeting today in uh, what month are we in? June 2021. So in the name of Jesus Christ and by the authority vested in me by this regional council, I declare the third annual meeting of the Living Skies Regional Council of the United Church of Canada open for worship, study, companionship, and such business as shall properly come before it. In recognition of our continuing work of reconciliation, I'm going to name our land acknowledgement now. And as I do so, I invite you to name the places you find yourself in Saskatchewan. And if there are treaty lands attached to that, um, please put that in the chat box as I read our land acknowledgement. We come together this evening and throughout Saturday for many places across Living Skies Regional Council places that are on the traditional territories and treaty lands of strong and diverse First Nations and the homeland of the Métis, Métis people. As we gather, let us respect and honor these traditional lands. Let us pray that as we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, we will be motivated to faithfully move forward in partnerships with our Indigenous siblings and the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration we are all treaty people. I'm going to invite uh, Hoen to lead us in a time of worship. Okay, uh, we will going to we'll watch a pre-recorded uh, opening service. So uh, while the video is playing, please uh, turn off your camera and unmute, unmute yourselves so that the uh, latency somewhat uh, can't can be low. So
what follows is a list of different words for the words breathe or breath in different languages. Listen to the sounds. Hear the sounds of the words and hear the breath in them as we open our minds, our hearts, our souls, our bodies to prayer. Breathe with me. Breathe. As we consider who we are, as we gather in the midst of a pandemic, as church leaders, as followers of Jesus, in a most unusual time and place, joining with each other virtually as Living Skies Regional Council, we are called to breathe, to pray, inviting the spirit to come with us, live through us. Breathe. Adman, Aitai, Anna, Andas, Anapleo. Atman, Disati, Dushet, Henita, Ikiosuru. Kayahek Odedehash Osi Pakita Tamuk Puske. Respirar. Respirare. Respire. Sumushda. Amen and Amen. Oh, mm -hmm.
There's a story in the book of Acts, chapter 16, where Paul and Silas have been beaten and thrown in prison for healing a slave girl, and in the process, ending her exploitation. It's the middle of the night, when all of a sudden there's an earthquake right beneath the jail, and the prison doors fly open and all the prisoner shackles fall off. Seeing the prison doors wide open, the jailer assumes the prisoners have escaped and he draws his sword to kill himself. But Paul stops him just in time and assures him that all of the prisoners are present and accounted for. The jailer goes in and falls at Paul and Silas's feet and asks what he needs to do to be saved. Throughout the rest of the night, we see them talking, sharing a meal together, the jailer binds up Paul and Silas's wounds, and they baptize the jailer and his whole family. And the next day, there is a public apology. And notice the disruption of power relationships and the resulting mutuality and the shared salvation for both the jailer and the jailed. This is the biblical passage I keep coming back to when I think about what anti-racism work means to me and why it's essential for our church that we take up this work now. Because my liberation and your liberation and our shared salvation and liberation from the systems and structures of racism and white supremacy and all the ways they constrain and distort our lives depends on it. This is our healing journey. We cannot wait. Yesterday was the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death. The death that shook the entire world because it is horrible death and it's painful death and nobody should die that way. Uh, when I saw the video, I was terrified. George Floyd is a somebody with dream, it's a somebody with goal, a somebody with vision, a somebody with face, with space, a somebody who worked to improve his life. More importantly, as somebody who wanted to build a church community. Just like every other person out there that experienced racism every day, including myself as a black woman. We have family, we have goal, we have dream, we have faith. We are working every day to better our community, to better our life, as well to better our church. To me, I would like to see a church or a place of worship in general to not only condemn racism in our church, not only read books, not only have sermon in our church about racism. It's also our duty and it's our job to have resources in place to confront racism 
going on in our community. To confront racism also going on in in our place of worship. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as we all know, Jesus is an advocate, is a human rights advocate. What happened to your floor? If Jesus Christ were there, he would be on the street protesting and he would fight to change the law because his job was to be there with those who are isolated, with those who are judged, with for those who are perceived not good people. And Jesus Christ fight for them. He would do the same thing with everybody that experienced racism. As a church, it's our job to stand up and not only talking, but also put resources in places to address racism in our church in order for us to become an anti-racism church. brothers and relatives in Jesus Christ of the Living Skies Regional Council. I am myself, Dennis Soufliné, a member of the English River First Nation. Uh, and as both an indigenous person and as uh, a follower of Jesus, my faith and conviction uh, in racial justice and pursuit of reconciliation is grounded in the person and work of Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John chapter 12, Jesus says that when he is lifted up, he will draw all people to him. He means in this, when he is lifted up onto the cross, when he is lifted up on that hill outside of Jerusalem, uh, what he does there is not just for some of us, but is for all, for all people, and even beyond that, for all creation, that what Jesus does on the cross dying to pay the price for our sins, taking our place, uh, undoing estrangement and reconciling us to one another and to the earth and to God, that in Jesus' gift of himself on the cross, what he does there is for all, for all. And so in our time, in our time of growing uh, divisions, of expanding inequalities, of great climate change in our time of so many challenges, we believe that what Jesus does for us on the cross is for all. And so then, as we pursue racial justice, as we pursue reconciliation, these are not optional for the followers of Jesus in our time. These are at the very heart of who we are and what we are called to be as the church. When Jesus draws us all with him onto the cross, that means that our old selves of selfishness and anger and bitterness, of hatred and division, our old selves with all of our mistakes and guilt and shame and sin, including the sins of racism and colonialism, as well as those other sins that go with them of homophobia and transphobia and biphobia, of misogyny, of all of the evils of our time, all of those die with Jesus uh, when he takes on all of our sins upon the cross as he draws all people to him. And what he does there is to reconcile all things and all people to God. And so then, if we then are the people of Jesus, if we have had our lives changed by Jesus and what he does on the cross, and if we then join Jesus in his glorious resurrection to new life, and we ourselves are made new, our task then is to join Jesus in making the whole world new, all things made new, a new heaven and a new earth where justice makes its home, like Peter says. That is our calling to work with one another and with Jesus Christ to share how our lives have been changed for the transformation of the world.
As we are concerned about growing anti-Asian sentiment in this time of pandemic, we are also reminded that anti-Asian racism has been present in Canada for centuries. There have been so many law and regulations in Canada to limit the number of immigrants from Asian countries to prevent the Asian Canadians from voting or working in public works. And also in time of crisis, such as pandemic and war, Asian Canadians have been vulnerable to racial prejudice and violence over the centuries until today. And we find this kind of xenophobic rhetoric also in the Bible story, for example, the story of baby Moses. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, showed the growing mentality of fear of others. And this rhetoric of fear and hostility against foreigners brings about policy of oppression, discrimination, and exploitation. And even the king Pharaoh then tried more aggressive policy of birth control and genocide by telling midwives to kill all Hebrew boys when they help the Hebrew mothers giving birth. And this reminds me of the news about indigenous women coming forward with account of forced sterilization as recently as in 2018 in Saskatchewan. Yet in the midst of crisis, we also find some courageous women taking enormous risks to save lives. I'm particularly fascinated with the two midwives named Shifra and Pua, who disobeyed the order from the king Pharaoh to save lives. They didn't act like what people would do in time of crisis. They acted in compassion in the face of incredible challenges. They practiced a kind of Hebrew lives matter or slaves' lives matter movement in their situation. And here the Bible says, the two midwives respected God so they didn't obey the Egyptian king's order. Instead, they let the baby boys live. Their act of compassion, their act of Hebrew lives matter movement is based on their faith in God of life. Their act of compassion comes from their faith in God of justice and love. And I wonder, this is something we can reflect on as we try to become an anti-racist church in time of pandemic crisis and growing anti-Asian sentiment and violence. It makes me question, what does it mean to follow Jesus in the midst of fear and stress? What does it mean to act like those two midwives in the face of incredible challenge? I invite you to take a time to ponder with these questions as individuals, as a whole church. In the Arrogant Worm song, Jesus Brother Bob, the fictional forgotten invisible brother of Jesus, Bob, shares his woes of living in the shadow of his famous brother. In the gospel passage, Jesus widens his definition of family. And at the same time, I get this feeling that his birth family disappears just a wee little bit as we seek to become anti-racist church in the land of living skies, it seems that what we're trying to do is to uncover and spotlight that which seems to disappear quite easily. When I became conference president, uh, Saskatchewan conference president in 2005, after 80 years, I was the first person of color to hold that office. I'm really not sure that people at the time understood what a big deal it was for me. Not so much personally, but as a woman of color. And I don't think anybody ever mentioned it. 
I guess those were the days when we thought it would be better to be colorblind, to dismiss or ignore parts uh, that make us different. And perhaps I, with other Asian Canadians, have bought into the myth of the model minority. That is, if you work hard, keep your heads low, try to blend in, we will succeed and not be touched by the racism that other groups have, that oppression Olympics. But the racism touches all of us. It touches us whether you're like me and have people ask you all the time, so where are you from really? Or whether or not you're someone who gets followed around uh, the stores or whether or not you're someone whose voice is heard all the time. Racism touches us. And although I love the term Asian Canadian, I know it's problematic for some, I have grown to love the term because it's a political term. Prior to the 60s, I would have been known as a 1.5 generation Japanese Canadian woman. But inspired by black power and the American Indian movements at that time, two US college students started using the term Asian American for solidarity, for justice seeking, to work shoulder to shoulder with black indigenous Latinx folks. This is a political reality which is a rejection of the invisibility of Asians and with it the stereotype of the meek, passive, obedient model minority. So when I am tempted to stay invisible, I get strength and comfort and I'm challenged by these words of an old dear friend and him. God sees God sees the little sparrow fall. And I know God loves us too. How can I possibly make a difference in the complicated and monumental task of being an ally for racial justice? I am an avid reader who has connections to other people who love to read. Is it possible to use that as an avenue to open the discussion, to initiate the journey? I know we have members of the congregation here who would read a book even if they do not sign up for a book club or a study group. Reading the same materials as one another can provide a framework for exploring our personal thoughts, feelings, and actions. Reading allows for introspection. It opens our minds to examine ourselves. Reading creates curiosity and leads to branching out to diverse materials. In our society, we have access to multiple forms of media that include video and audio material that are thought-provoking and relevant. Reading, seeing, listening to new perspectives in variety can contribute to breaking down the barriers of defensiveness, fear, guilt, and ignorance, and expand our capacity to understand the way racial justice benefits all of us. When I decided to join our racial justice study group, it was to learn more about racism, but I never thought it would be so overwhelming. There are so many terms, phrases, and new language to understand, and uncomfortable questions to think about that are related to everyday life, such as our individual and collective responsibility for white supremacy and how to challenge it. I am beginning to understand we are a part of a racial system and need to deal with racial prejudice and reflect on our racial biases and thoughts. I see and hear examples of racism on television, in the media, and in everyday life that I never thought of before. For me, looking at the past, present, and future, CBC documentary Black on the Prairies has added my awareness of racism. I realize as a community of faith, we can and be an ally for racial justice by recognizing racism as we support each other on our journey toward an anti-racist church.
So where do we go from here? How do we tackle this issue to which we as dominantly white congregation have just been awakened? We can continue to learn and to engage and talk about racism, not in a pushy way, but in an open, uh, listening, non-judgmental way. We can acknowledge our privilege and check that privilege in the way we speak and the assumptions we make. At St. Paul's, we have been fortunate to be able to participate in three initiatives toward racial justice. First, a territorial acknowledgement has been incorporated into our worship. And yes, there has been some pushback but there has also been willingness to talk about its importance in our church. Second, in February, our book group took active parts in the worship service explaining the history of black people in Canada. We sang hymns and gospel songs, and who does not feel the spirit welling up in them when they're singing, My Lord, What a Morning. We were joyously celebrating black culture. Lastly, May has been Asian Heritage Month, we have had the privilege of hearing and singing several Asian hymns from Voices United and More Voices. So as a church, we are learning about racial justice and benefiting from the gift of racial diversity. We believe we are all equal before God. We, we believe, believe racism is a sin and, and violates God's desire for humanity. We believe racism is present in our society and in our church, and throughout time has manifested itself in many forms to varying degrees. We believe that the struggle against racism is a continuous effort Therefore, our anti-racism policy statement is only a first step. It provides the basis for the creation of a church where all are welcome, where all feel welcome, and where diversity is as natural as breathing. We believe change is possible. We believe in forgiveness, reconciliation, and transformation, and in the potential to learn from stories and experiences. We believe we are called to work against racism and for a society in which the word of gospel are realized among us. We believe in a vision of society in which these words of the gospel are realized. It is through faith that all of you are God's people in union with Christ Jesus. You were baptized into union with Christ, and now you are clothed, so to speak, with the life of Christ. So there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles, between slaves and free persons, between men and women. You are all one in union with Christ Jesus. Friends, the Indigenous Church is calling for its settler friends to remember and to be in mourning with them as we continue to process the news of the remains of 215 children discovered last week from the Kamloops Residential School. We know that there were a number of residential schools within the bounds of our regional council. 
We know that the urge to act is strong and that there will be time for that. Now is the time for lament. And so we hold in our hearts the Indigenous communities of faith and the residential school survivors in Living Skies as we hear the names of the residential schools spoken aloud, the ones that existed in this region. And as we reflect on the poetry of Parliamentary Poet Laureate, Louise B. Half Sky Dancer. And so I invite you to listen as we name these schools. Battleford Industrial Residential School. Beauval Lac La Plonge Residential School. Cote Federal Day School, Kamsak. Grosstand Residential School, Kamsak. Emmanuel College Industrial School, Prince Albert. File Hills Residential School, Belcaris. Fort Pelly St. Philip's Mission Residential School, Kamsak. Gordon's Residential School, George Gordon Reserve, Penishai. Guy Sturgeon Landing Residential School, Sturgeon Landing. Isle Lacrosse Residential School, Metis, Isle Lacrosse. Labrette Industrial School, Corpel Whitecalf St. Paul's, Labrette. Maryvale Residential School, Cowessis and Crooked Lake, Grayson, Saskatchewan. Ms. Cowquin Residential School, Lestock and Touchwood. Prince Albert Industrial Residential School. Regina Industrial, Regi Industrial School, Regina. Round Lake Residential School, Stockholm. St. Anthony's Residential School, Onion Lake. St. Michael's Duck Lake Residential School, Duck Lake. Thunderchild, St. Henry Delmas, Delmas, Saskatchewan. I share these words of poetry with you called angels, or the past is always our present. A cradle board hangs from a tree. A beaded moss bag is folded in a small chest. A child's moccasin is tucked into a skunk pipe bag, children's shoes in a ghost dance. A mother clutches these palms held against her face. A river runs between her fingers. A small boy covered in soot. On all fours, a naked toddler plays in the water while her kokum's skirt is wet to her calves. How tall are you now, she asks. I'm bigger than a blueberry shrub. Oh, as tall as an aspen where my birth was buried. See my belly button? Each have dragged a rabbit to the tent, a teepee. Watched experts, ha expert hands, skin, butcher, make berry soup for dinner. Boy falls a robin with a slingshot. He's shown how to skewer the breast, roast the bird on hot coals. He will not kill without purpose again. The teepee, tent, the log shack are empty. Trees crane their heads through the teepee flaps, tent door, through the cracks of the mud shack. A mother's long wail from 1890 carried in the wind a grandparent pokes embers, a sprinkle of tobacco, cedar, sweetgrass, fungus, sage, swirls upward. Children's creeks trickle in their sleep. 
a blanket of deep earth covered fingers entwined, arms around each other. We have been waiting. It is time to release this storm that consumes all this nation. Oasis, this spirit light, these angels dance in the flame. The bones will share the stories. Listen, act. These children are ours, could be yours. O oh, Creator God, how could we not delight in the awesome abundance, creativity, diversity, and joy you provide for all creation? You have been faithful through all generations of humanity, inviting us to be grasped by your love and imagination. Empowering God, it is you who imagines and wills a world where healing and servant power is privileged over tyrannical and oppressive power. A world where we relish and celebrate the variety of thin and thick lips, of kinky straight and curly hair, of broad and narrow noses. And of a veritable potpourri of skin colors. A world where the evils of racism, discrimination, and rejection are overcome and replaced with the joys of welcome, hospitality, justice, and peace. O oh God, grant us a vision, resolve, imagination, grace, and stamina for this wondrous journey of transformation. You call us to do this together, and so we will. In the effort to dismantle racism, we understand that our struggle is not merely against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities. Those institutions and systems that keep racism alive by perpetuating the lie that some members of our family are inferior and others superior. Good and gracious God, you invite us to recognize and reverence your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our world, and ourselves. In, In the, the name, name and way, and of, way Jesus, of Jesus, we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. Shine a ray of gold that's burning.
excerpt from the Truth About Stories from the Massey Lectures offered by Cherokee author Thomas King. This is how the book closes. It refers to the stories told, and here we will apply it to our time together. Take it. It's yours. Do with it what you will. Tell it to your children. Turn it into a play. Forget it. But don't say, in the years to come, that you would have lived your life differently if only you heard this story. You have heard it now. God sees each of us and calls us by name. Calling us to stand firm in the face of oppression and injustice. May we stand firm then, as the Holy Spirit enlivens our hope. As Jesus Christ renews our faith, as God enfolds us in love. Go forth, agitated, yet blessed, challenged, but determined, energized, but also fatigued, gifted too, hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. Amen, friends. Um, Shannon just wanted to chat with you for a couple of seconds about closed captioning. Uh, yes, so we have turned on the closed captioning. Please don't get upset at the typing job. It's auto type. So it's none of our staff who are typing the words. And <laughs> sometimes the computer hears things differently than we intend. If this uh, helps you, that's great. If you need the words to be bigger, if you press on, click on the little arrow beside your video uh, camera, there's a little up arrow there, and you have access there to your video settings. And those in those video settings, it says accessibility. And under accessibility, you can change the size of the captions. If you prefer not to have the captions showing, where you see across the bottom of your screen where you have your chat and your share screen and raise hand and all those options. Live transcript is there and you can just say um, don't show so, uh, subtitles and that will go away for you. Um, so we hope that this will be helpful for people and make the meeting as accessible as possible. Thanks Trisha. Thanks Shannon. Don't go away. Oh okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, friends. Um, I'm going to run through protocol for voting because we're going to move on to the enabling motions. And if you're looking for the enabling motions, you'll find them in the general meeting um, part of the doc. Did I say something wrong? I got muted. Can you hear me? You can, yes. okay. Oh, there he is. Don's doing his stuff in the background there. Anyways, um, so if you don't have the docket available, we have it up on the screen here, but it's also in your docket on A13. 
So in order to um, vote at this particular uh, annual meeting, you are going to need to know how to raise your hand because that is how we're going to be marking our votes this time. So some of you have already noticed this down at the bottom of your screen. You will see a bar that pops up and down when you move your mouse. Now I'm working on a laptop. Those of you who are on iPads, I'm hoping um, if, you, if you're on your iPad, because I have an iPad here going too, uh, up on the right hand side of your screen up in the top corner where you have uh, start video and share content participants, those three dots, if you click it, a box pops up and you'll see at the bottom of it, raise hand and you'll just press that when it comes time to voting. For those of you who are on laptops or big computers, you'll go to the bottom bar and you'll see there the only option is raise hand and you'll be using that for when we're voting. We also will be using raise hand for conversation and I'll be very clear when we're voting and when we're having discussion. What we're gonna ask you to do is that when you are answering a, a vote or if you're voting, um, you're gonna raise your hand, but do not, I see you Marvin, hold on one second. Are you just practicing Marvin? Okay, folks, hold on, we'll practice in a minute. Um, just hold, Deb, did you have a question? Um, we are working on getting rid of the square that's in the middle of the screen. You can move your closed captions around anywhere on your computer screen that you want them, if you still want them to show up. If you don't want them to show up, if they're blocking your view, you can turn them off. But uh, anytime Don has anything else open on his screen, we get those little black boxes and so, He's working on getting those closed. Uh, Deb Anderson, I, uh, Deb Anderson Pratt, I see your hand raised. Do you, have, if you have a question, unmute yourself, please. Oh, okay. So, when we come to our vote, what I'm going to ask you to do, it'll be sound pretty much the same. If you're in your, if you're in favor of a motion, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and then I'm going to ask you to let go of your buttons and just leave your hand raised. Do not lower your own hands, okay, um, on your screen because uh, we'll keep tabs, and then our tech crew behind the scenes will remove all of those buttons, um, all of those hands that are raised, and then we'll move on to any who oppose. Same deal. Leave your hand up on the screen, please. Don't don't lower it on your own. Um, it's not that we don't trust you, it's just that we may not be able to count as fast as you take your hands down. So um, keep those up. We're going to practice. Oh, for those of you who happen to be on the phone, Dwayne, I see you. Just one second, please. Uh, those of you who are on the phone with us, to raise your hand, you will press star nine at the same time as everybody on the screen is pressing their raise hand buttons. It, using the raised hands means that everybody can vote at the same time and we don't have to uh, worry about uh, those people on the phone voting at a separate time. Um, so I'm going to test you on your ability to uh, process these instructions. Now, Tracy and I had some conversation about what question to ask. She had some pretty contentious ones. I opted to hopefully go with something less sports oriented and more food oriented. Um, because when we get into sports, as a transplant from BC, I'm still learning that's very dangerous territory, and I don't want to start us off on the wrong foot. So this is a question for you to answer yes or no to. Sauerkraut belongs in pierogies. Vote yes if you agree. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Okay. And I'm gonna count down three, two, one tech folk, you can clear those off. And then those who oppose that idea of sauerkraut belonging in pierogies. Oh, a close vote. It's a close vote. So in the case where we have a close vote, uh, three, two, one, we've closed and the tech crew can now work their techie magic. So when it's a close call like that, 
we will uh, look at the numbers. Otherwise, I will just announce whether or not a motion has passed or not. Um, I see some questions here. Bev Diver, or Bev Didick, I see your hand. And then Ursula, I'll, you'll follow up with a question. Bev, did you have a question? Your hand is raised. Okay, uh, Julie, can we, yeah, there we go. And then the Weebs, do you have questions for me? Oh, you're muted, Vic. No. Beth Johnson, can you put yourself on mute, please? Well, I was trying to. Um, oh, hold on, Beth. I will come to you in a second. Vic? Yeah, we have two people that are both voting in the same room. You're going to have to agree on a vote. You only count as one. <laughs> Good luck. So if you need marital counseling after, I'll give you Shannon's cell phone number later, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Vic and Dana. Uh, Beth Johnson, did you have a, que a question? Yes, I wasn't able to vote because okay. I don't seem to be able to consistently find the setting to raise hand. It's, um, it, I have to click something first and it doesn't seem to work consistently. Um, okay. That's, I'm just trying to, it's one of the participants chat share screen uh, and it appeared for a while and now it's gone. Is and it I'm, on your toolbar at the bottom of your screen, Beth? What I'm looking at is participants, which says 172 and I click on the arrow and all I see is invite. And no. then there's, there's a chat. <laughs> I need you to look down and to yeah. your right. Down, and it should I, say where you see chat, screen share, and then it should say raise hand. Nope, it's not there. If you press more, is it there? I don't see more. Three dots that say more. I don't see a more. I found it before quite by accident. And then I went to vote. And all I see is live transcript. And then way over, it's leave. And I'd rather not leave. Um, okay. <laughs> if that's if fun. I may, okay. Trisha, um, when Beth when Beth is when she hits the participants thing, if she doesn't do the arrow, just tap on where it says participants, then she'll get the list of participants on the right hand side, and that should give her the raise hand. But okay, if you just do the arrow, that. then you will get what she said. But if you do oh. the whole thing then you should get okay. raised hand. Okay, now I think I can get that. I just, okay. I had seen it once, I tried it the second time and I thought I wanna vote because I hate sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we're at best now that we've got you figured out, um, Benita. <laughs> Trish, you're muted. Sir. I'm muted again, what is going on here? It's because it's when a year it moves and when we're trying to, un when we're, we, we need to mute everyone and then it's, uh, yeah, anyway, okay. okay. You think after a year and a half of using Zoom, I would automatically unmute uh, myself. Okay, Benita, you have a question? Uh, yes, that last suggestion <clears throat> about participants and clicking on that worked wonderfully, so thank you. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Carolyn, for your help with that. Thanks, Benita. Okay, friends, um, we are gonna go ahead with our enabling motions now. Um, if we all just take a breath and center ourselves back into the work that we're doing. So we've decided, decided that sauerkraut is a, is a contentious point too. Sports and food, not safe at all in Saskatchewan. Okay. So Don, are you gonna put up the enabling motions again for us? There we go. So these are the enabling motions for um, our meeting today. If you're having problems seeing them here and you're able to pull them up on your own laptop or if you have them in front of you, they're on page A13 of the general meeting section of the gathering um, docket. This motion is moved by Shannon and seconded, I believe Shannon, give me a nod by Daryl Rainey. Yes. Excellent. So 
for any discussion, I will ask you to raise your hand. I will identify you as the names come up on the screen. Is there any discussion about this motion? Seeing none. Uh, though I will ask the question, those in favor of these enabling motions as described on page A13, please raise your hand now. Excellent. Three, two, one, we will wipe those off. Thanks, tech crew. Any opposed to this motion? This motion is carried. So Don, we voted on all of the enabling motions at once. We're not doing <laughs> individually, so you can just stop sharing now. Um, I see that Deb Anderson Pratt, do you have a question for us? No, Linda Sullivan, do you have a question? No. No, okay. Janae, uh, do you? It's oh, Deb, Deb, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. It keeps saying raised hand and then I click on it and it says lowered hand and then it comes up raised hand again. <laughs> So is, uh, do just, I have a raised hand or what? <laughs> you, you did. Just trust that the uh, the tech crew will deal with your hand after it's done. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Either that or I'll just keep calling you out, Deb. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Janae, did you have a question for us? Trisha, I see a question in the chat for asking for abstention. Yeah. We don't oh, have abstentions in the United Church of Canada. Oh, okay. Only record abstentions if somebody uh, requests it in the minutes, but otherwise we don't uh, we don't ask for abstentions. Okay, so if only if anybody asks to be noted down in the minutes as, as abstaining, correct? Okay. Donna, did you have a question for me? Donna, you don't have a question? Okay. We're just, uh, can we? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that is passed. Look at that, we did one and we didn't explode. This is good, right? Yay! No, you guys are all just like, it's, I can't hear any of you. And so unlike what Tracy had, where you all, you know, gave her, yeah, thank you, Julie. <laughs> yeah, I'll put in for a raise for you. <laughs> Oh, I'm so very different than Rob. Okay. At this point, I'm going to ask, um, we're going to move into hearing about the proposals that we have in front of us to talk about this week. And, and so at this point, I'm going to invite Sando to come forward and to unmute and speak to us on proposal one. And if uh, Sando will need to start his video for us to spotlight too. Yes. Sando, can you start your video and unmute? Yeah, I have started my video. So Where did you go? There you are. Julie, he's there. There you are, Sando. Hi. Go yeah, ahead. Thanks for, thanks for giving me a time to speak about the proposal I have submitted. Uh, what I'm suggesting in the proposal is that the Living Skies Regional Council establish a justice committee to promote justice and equity for all people in all aspects of life and work of regional council with terms of reference to be created by the, by the executive. And also the committee develops and adopt the policy on justice based on the anti-racist and anti-oppressive principles and the voices from the marginalized people in society. And why am I suggesting this? Because in the United Church, we 
have this be, uh, vision of becoming an intercultural and inclusive community with strong sense of justice and equity for all people, both within the church and in society. And as we have seen over the last years from Black Lives Matter movement, Indigenous Lives Matter movement, and also sharp spike in anti-Asian hate crimes during this pandemic. So there has been some awareness and concerns about racial justice. And United Church of Canada in the national level, the United Church uh, made a commitment to become becoming an anti-racist denomination with a new document named towards an anti-racist denomination. And also General Council Office hired the staff of the position of anti-racism and equity lead in the General Council Office to engage with this uh, practice in all parts of Canada at uh, church. And also in our region in Saskatchewan, St. Andrews College in Saskatoon has recently adopt, adopted its own policy on justice. And in that policy, it articulates its commitment and practice and framework for understanding in, in the practice of uh, the college. And if you want, I can share the document for your, uh, for your information. I'm going to upload it in the chat box for your information. So I think it is important to set policies that provide direction and principles on this uh, racial justice issue to all governing bodies, including Living Skies Regional Council Executive, Commission and Committees, Communities of Faith, clusters and networks, and all individuals in our region. So that is the background uh, why I have uh, submitted this proposal. The title of the proposal is Living Skies Regional Council Committee and Policies on Justice. That's it. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Sundo. So Sundo was going to put the notes in um, the chat box, but also you'll find the proposals as part of the docket. Uh, and we are going to now hear from Daryl Woods and Randy Graham, uh, who are going to speak on proposal number two. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to the council. I just want you to imagine for a minute that you have a serious medical condition that requires hospitalization, or perhaps you're facing surgery, or you may be dealing with life-threatening illness. Think what it must be like to have to deal with it totally alone. COVID has brought that home to us like nothing else, I'm sure. I want you to imagine too that your government has decided that it's up to you to see that your spiritual needs are met, but your faith leader isn't even allowed to come and see you or you don't have such a person. Well, in March of 2017, the Saskatchewan provincial budget eliminated health region funding for non-denominational spiritual care. And this also led to the elimination of institutional patient lists that were used by the denominational chaplains and the spiritual care providers throughout the Saskatchewan Health Authority. Saskatchewan became and continues to be the only province in Canada that does not fund or administratively support spiritual care in health region facilities. Even though evidence shows that spiritual care is an essential contributor to positive outcomes in health care regardless of the patient's religious affiliation or even lack of it. Our opinion supported by the evidence of the Canadian Association of Spiritual Care and members of the healthcare system itself is that the removal of funding for spiritual care in 2017 was an error that must be corrected. And so as the boards and staff of the South Saskatchewan Hospital Chaplaincy and the Northern Saskatchewan Hospital Chaplaincy we believe that God is calling us to support 
the spiritual well-being of patients and residents in the Saskatchewan Health Authority and their facilities by petitioning the government of Saskatchewan and the Saskatchewan Health Authority for the reinstatement of funding and support for spiritual care in the provincial health care budget. One of the ways that the regional council might support us and the congregate in the communities of faith there with therein could issue a formal request to the Saskatchewan Health Authority to our provincial minister of health and to the premier of Saskatchewan for the reinstatement of adequate funding and support for spiritual care programs in our provincial health care budget. We'd also encourage communities of faith and members and adherents throughout the Living Skies region to contact their members of leg the Legislative Assembly with a request to reinstate adequate funding and support for spiritual care programs in the provincial health care budget. So that's our proposal uh, to the region and uh, we would appreciate your support in trying to reestablish spiritual care in Saskatchewan hospitals. Thanks, Daryl. So those are the two proposals we have to um, work through this weekend. Um, and the first step is we're going to move into breakout rooms to have conversation. So Julie is going to work her magic in the background there. Um, and she's going to assign us to small groups, to breakout groups. What you have to do is press the button that says accept when the little square shows up on your screen that says I will go into a breakout group. Um, and in those breakout groups, we want you to think about three questions. And these three questions are um, going to pop up in your chat box if you don't keep them in your head. Um, so the three questions are, any questions you have for clarification on the proposals themselves? Now, there may or may not be people in your group that can answer those questions, so keep, the, keep that in mind. Um, discuss how you feel about the proposal, whether you're in favor of it or not, or why. Have more conversation, less, than, less debate, more conversation about how you're feeling about that. And finally, discuss any changes you'd like to see happen to the proposals. We are going to ask you to appoint a note taker in your small group who will write down in point form those notes um, for submission to uh, living skies at, at united-church.ca. That email will also show up in the chat box. Um, and you're gonna email the results of your conversation to that email address by tomorrow morning so that the proposals team can look at the questions and the changes that are proposed. And then when we come back tomorrow to talk about and to vote on the proposals, we'll have a proposal that reflects what the group has talked about. So we're gonna break into small groups. You're gonna have discussion on those three questions. The questions, Russell, will be put up on the um, in the chat, uh, we will try to get them up as you're going into the chat rooms. Um, okay, we'll we'll try to get those up, right, Julie? She's working her magic. <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> let's, not, let's not jinx it here. These things regularly <laughs> beat us with these larger numbers, so uh, I might have to recreate in a sec. Yes, if uh, the chat is really the only way we can we can share that with everyone. But just a reminder to folks that um, you should not take your notes in the chat because those will disappear when the room closes. So if you could please choose a recorder who can just uh, put them in, in a Word document or, or whatever in an email, doesn't matter, but not in the chat, please, for the actual notes. And Tricia, can I just check with you the time? check here. Um, I had this down for 20 minutes. Is that still okay? Do you... uh, we're running a little bit behind or is that where we're Just to here? touch. Yeah. So is it okay if uh, we want to try for 20 still or? Um, let's, uh, Shannon, do you have we, any input here? I think we should, I think we should be okay on this to have it at 20. Okay. okay. 20 minutes. Okay. So you have 20 minutes in your small groups, friends. Um, the questions are on, um, oh, thank you, Benita, for being here. The questions are up from other under Shannon's uh, name. Uh, questions for clarifications, discussions on the proposal, and then changes you would suggest. And then the email address is in the chat. Please designate one person to take notes, not in the chat, but in a separate document. 
and have them email that off. You have 20 minutes. Have good conversation, friends. Yeah, and now nothing's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> Shannon, the I still don't it's, understand. So, the like, so just do under 30, like 30 or. Yeah, under. yeah. No, I just recreate that. Yeah, that's nuts. That should have been OK. Yes, please discuss both proposals. Both. Yeah. This is your time to discuss both proposals. So a lot, a lot your time accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now it's, yeah, that's working. Okay. I'm going to do it automatically so it'll probably dump you in this too as well. Can I pause the recording or do you want to leave it going? Well, you have 82 seconds to fill, Tricia. It's your show, sweetheart. You're the stand up comedian. <laughs> do we really? People can just stand up and move around. Yeah, stretch. Take a stretch, friends. If you want, go for a quick run for water, but come right back. But definitely move we about. Talk about hockey. No, yeah, we don't no. Know to talk about Where's Linda hockey. Gunningham? I have a bone to pick with that woman. Oh, Shelly. <laughs> it didn't help today, though. Do you want these notes that we kept? Do you, do you want us to send them as soon as possible? Sure, that would be That'd great. Be great. Okay. okay. Can you repeat the email address? Sure. It's in, it's in the, the chat, chat but we'll put it in there again. It's, it's living skies at united church.ca. So we just, so we just type it up. Our, our, our remarks. I don't even remember what group I was. <laughs> Doesn't matter really. Okay. We can, we can look and see. Okay. I'll put my name in there and then um, I'll type it up and then just and forward that to you. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thank you, Diane. There's the emails up for those who took the recordings. The email's in the chat now. Are we all back, Shannon? Not quite. No, I Are see you, a, oh, there, there's the yeah. rest of no, them are should, back. Yeah, we should, oh, there we they should come. be back now. Do you, are you just wanting to check with the chair? Do you want to skip the music break? Or uh, Don just needs to know if he has to. Oh, is that what, we could do the music break we'll and then find a little bit. So. Sing along and, um, We'll probably recoup some time in a little bit. So let's do a music break and uh, you guys can fill up your cups if you need to or stretch and then come back. Okay, here we go. How long is the break? Like four minutes, three minutes. Okay. No, I'm not getting any sound, Don. We're missing the sound, Don. I'm sure you're working on it. Okay, one more try. There we go. That was working done. <laughs> Could we get the email address again, please? I just put it in the chat. Can you see that? Yeah. 
It's right there in the chat. Oh. Right there. Sing something, Trisha. Oh, Just go right. ahead. Daryl, go right ahead. Um, the poem that I read to you, I'll put it in the chat for you, Don. My apologies for that. I don't know whether the recording's messing me up or not, but we'll try this again. One more try, and then we'll move on to uh, to our plenary time. I danced in the morning when the world was begun I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced with the scribe in the Pharisee They would not dance, they wouldn't follow me So I danced with the fishermen, James and John They came with me and the dance went on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath and cured the lame The holy people, they said it was a shame They whipped and they stripped and then hung me high Left me there on a cross to die Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dead, said he And I'll lead you on wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he Dance on a Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dead, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he They cut me down but I leapt up high I am the life that will never, never die I live in you if you live in me I am the Lord of the dance, said he Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dead, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dead, said he, I'll lead you all in the dead, said he, I'll lead you all in the dead, said he. Thank you. Erin is, Erin Jones is online here and she's the parent to those fine boys from Coto Hills. I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon. She's gonna walk us through the next steps of uh, the plenary and we're gonna have some discussion time. Uh, yeah, so basically what we want now is if there's things that happened in your or questions you had in your small group that you weren't able to answer amongst you that you would like to ask into the plenary that will help you make a decision on the proposal, we would like you to raise your hand and ask that now. Um, we, we're not going to get into micro editing the proposals in this time. I will put them up on the screen so you can see the words there. But what we really want is, um, is there something small that could be added or adjusted to make it so you could vote for the proposal? Uh, you can do that verbally in this space, or you can just send it to us in an email with your notes. So if you overall, you agree with the proposal, but we missed dotting an I or crossing a T or there's some, some grammar that you don't like, which is entirely possible because I edit them uh, and, or, you know, things like that. Then if you just send us the email to living skies, that's probably more helpful than, than uh, time now. And then once we kind of have them uh, where we sense there's no more questions for clarification, if 
we want we have time and we want to have discussion about the proposals around um, you know whether we're in favor or not in favor and so on and so the way that you can ask questions and get clarification and so on is to raise your hand and Trisha will um, acknowledge you if you can please uh, be prepared to unmute yourself so hover your mouse over your unmute so that once Trisha uh, calls on you that you're ready to speak to the motion uh, and anything that doesn't happen tonight please feel free to email living skies at uh, united-church.ca we will adjust the proposal tomorrow in between the two sessions so you have a little bit of time in the morning to send stuff in and then uh, so that we will have sort of the proposal that we've all crafted together that becomes a motion that we vote on tomorrow. So hopefully that's Thanks, Shannon. Uh, we'll start with Lorna and then we'll move to Diane after Lorna's done. Lorna? Um, in our group, there was a question um, saying it was not clear if it was if the proposal was just focusing on racial justice will we be broadening the mandate beyond just racial justice? Uh, did we want somebody to answer that, Shannon? I, I Sundo can answer. We're just gonna raise the question. The intention is that we don't focus on all justice, but that it would be grounded in the principles of anti-racism and equity uh, for all. Sando, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I think uh, Shannon spoke very well. I understand there have been other, other policies and statement of the United Church about different issues, intercultural ministry, like uh, the affirming ministry and disability, mental health, and many, many different aspects. But this time uh, I have put more, little more focus on the racial justice and racial justice and also anti-oppressive principles and voices from all the marginalized people like black, indigenous, people of color, LGBTQ people, and people with poverty, disability, mental illness, and more. So having having policy and particular committee working on promoting and practicing the justice and equity in what we, what we do in regional council might be very helpful for us to move forward becoming intercultural and a truly inclusive community. And some of them ask about the committee and network and cluster work. And I, I think having particular committee, justice committee, might be uh, better working with different networks, working with different groups and cluster, and being accountable to the regional council, and also have power and authority to work together and make plan and implement uh, some 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 actions and advocacy work that might be uh, more beneficial. If that is my thought and comment. Thank you. Thanks, Sando. Diane Young and then Susan Reed will follow. A question from our group was: uh, Would this committee be limited to? people who are on regional council or would it be open to uh, anyone who's a United Church member in Saskatchewan? That's a good question. Um, Sando, did you have a thought on that? Yeah, my intention is, uh, is relevant to our regional council, the Saskatchewan council. Uh, Susk yeah, Saskatchewan Regional Council. I can answer that, Trisha. It's, okay. Committees are can be members. They don't have to be members of the Regional Council. They can be anyone from across the, the church in Saskatchewan or Living Skies Regional Council. Commissions, they need to be members. So this is a committee. 
so they don't need to be members of the regional council already. It can be any member, anybody from the United Church in Living Skies. Excellent. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, Susan Reed, then Beth Johnston. Hi, folks. Uh, Susan Reed with the Carnif Elida Pastoral Charge and convener of the Nominations Committee of the Living Skies Regional Council. Just seeking some clarification, um, whenever we have a proposal, as we do with Proposal 1, that um, calls for the forming of a committee, uh, generally the uh, job of filling that committee falls to the nominations committee, finding folks for that work. So the more information that we can have, the better in terms of committee makeup. So if the regional council decides that we do want to go ahead with this proposal and we say, yes, we want to strike a justice committee, the nominations committee would find it helpful to know how many people we're looking for, if there's any particular makeup of the committee in terms of lay people or ministry personnel, a minimum numbers, those kinds of things, um, as well as a clear outlining of mandate, which we have in the proposal. So the more information we can have, um, the better for us and the easier our work in filling that committee. Uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Beth Johnston. Beth, you're muted. I keep, I, my picture keeps moving. Um, <laughs> um, one of the things we had discussed in our group was about accountability. And one of the things I noticed for the first time um, is that under the regional council system, the executive is not representative. Um, and my suggestion would be that this justice committee to fulfill the mandate that is suggested by the, by the, um, by the uh, by the um, by the framers is that this committee should be represented on the executive, but that may create a precedent that doesn't exist. But I, I can't see how they can do their work and have it mean anything without feeding directly to the executive. All of our committees are corresponding members to the executive and have the right to attend any meetings if they would like and uh, report to the executive on a regular basis and communicate reports and so on. So we, we really have held to the non-representative uh, option. And so I think there are ways that the communication can happen. Okay. But it's, it's not clear here. And being relative, like I remember voting these people in two years ago and going, uh, I mean, I, it's all new to me, and of course the regional system is new, and I think that I mean, that's just the question is, you know, how will, how will the executive benefit from the work of this committee? That's a good question. Thanks. Um, I'm just, Yvonne, I see your hand is up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust a couple of the questions in the chat, and then I'll come back to you in just a minute. Um, so Carol Beal McKenzie asked about um, what will the funding be for chaplaincy this coming year? I don't think we know yet because we haven't, um, the, the grants committee hasn't met. So that's, hasn't been determined yet. The grants, the, the grant applications oh, are due at the end. Sorry, could you repeat that, Leslie? Oh, it's Heather, sorry, I should have. Oh, sorry, read. Heather. <laughs> the grant applications are due at the end at the end of the month end of august end of august sorry i just kept losing you great so we'll know better then carol um yvonne did you have a question yes i was my question is is this going to be a committee or is it going to be a task force I believe it's a committee okay shannon is that your understanding That's what the proposal says, is a committee. Uh, there was another question in the chat that asked, um, Matthias Ross was asking, uh, in proposal one, the acronym LGBTQ2, T2S plus was um, used, and he was wondering what the two T's stood for after the Q. Uh, friends in the affirming ministries, would you be able to speak to that? Uh, 
see anybody. It, it's it's Julie that maybe more of a question for, for Sundo because uh, there's okay. there's different ways of expressing it. Um, so, so in the past, transgender and transsexual were sometimes used, okay. but they usually get lost to one T these days. <laughs> and two S is usually um, would indicate two two spirit, for example. So the, the, the use the number rather than the T. So okay, uh, Sundo, did you did you want to speak to the acronym? No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not capable enough to to explain all of the the acronyms. Yeah. Okay. But in terms of the structure, like whether it should be a task group or team or committee, if if the regional council members think and consider any other structure would work better, I have no problem. And my intention is when we have a committee accountable, being accountable to, to the regional council and also have a power to make plan and implement the practice. I think, I thought uh, the committee would work better, but it's, it's up to all of us to make, uh, make better, better uh, choice and decision. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Sundo. Bonnie, Morton, you have a question? Bonnie, feel free to unmute yourself. I, I had a trouble finding the button. <laughs> <laughs> it's old age and eyes, you know. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, for this to, to make more sense, um, when you're talking, uh, it goes on after the LGBTQ uh, TT2S, right? It says people with poverty. Uh, that should read people with the lived experience of poverty. Okay. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, Dexter Van Dyke asked a question around um, consideration budget needs for the committee. They would fall under the committees and networks um, budget line that we have at the at the, the regional council level. Um, now Buco is asking if they would be accountable to the regional council or the executive. Uh, Normally, uh, technically, all of our committees are accountable to the regional council, which is why they put reports in the annual report and submit those to you, and and you have the opportunity to 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 see those. Normal uh, operational practice is that their accountability day to day, if they have they need financial resources. If they want to do something that's outside of their mandate, they would come to the executive and that accountability would be with the executive on a sort of monthly basis with the same with all the other uh, commissions and committees in the regional council. Thanks, Shannon. Um, Vic and Dana, I see you. I'm just gonna answer one quick question on the chat and then we'll come back to you. Uh, the grants, Carol, are, are the grants that we were, I was talking about are the church grants given by um, the, the grants, the mission support uh, grants that are deemed, sorry, my brain, it's late, um, that are given through the application process through the regional council and that the uh, grants committee uh, makes those recommendations. <laughs> uh, Vic and Dana. <coughs> oh, Vic, you're, you're muted. Uh, Am I unmuted? Now you are. No, I am. Sorry about that. No, we used That's to have a okay. committee. I think it was called Right Relations, uh, where we, we looked at relationships with the Indigenous church and whatnot. That seems to have disappeared. And I, and I wonder whether some of the things that that group was doing and working with in terms of reconciliation would fit in within this kind of a committee. Thank you. 
I'm not sure. Shannon. Yeah, well, I think the executive will have to look at it. There are networks that are uh, working with uh, uh, the right relations pieces of work already, uh, uh, not necessarily based in living skies, but the the executive would come up with the terms of reference. So if they feel like reconciliation work fits well under this, then we can add, we, you know, make sure that that's reflected. Uh, I don't, it's, it may not, I'm not sure if it's all listed in the preamble there, but that would be up to the executive. And if you think that's important for the executive to consider that, then you can send that in through the email and say, we want to make sure this piece of work is included in the terms of reference and the executive can compile all of those. And when they build those terms of reference, they can be there and reflected there. Thank you. So I just want to take a quick moment to recognize that we are past the time that we had said we would be done for today. Um, I think what will happen is that we are going to, um, uh, I'll answer the last question from Diane Young around whether or not the spiritual care proposal refers to hospitals in Saskatoon and Regina only. Daryl Wood, can you answer that question for us? Uh, I think uh, it's probably because of both of the chaplaincies are centered in those two centers. I mean, that's what we were addressing, but I think spiritual care in any hospital setting is vital, but I have no idea whether there was funding in the past uh, for spiritual care in other major centers or not. I know the chaplaincies to this point had only been um, mostly centered in Saskatoon and Regina. Yeah, thanks, Daryl. Um, uh, Bev Didick, you're going to be the very last question. Um, if you have more questions, please email them to livingskies at united-church.ca. Uh, united um, the email's in the chat if you need more information. Um, so Bev Didick, what is your question? Oh, I just saw Lorna, your hand just went up too. Give me uh, Bev's question and then Lorna, and then we're, we'll, we'll move on to uh, our benediction. Go ahead, Bev. You're muted. Now, okay. yes, it's a question. It's a comment rather than a question that any place, any hospital should be included in this. I was working in Gull Lake when this first came up and um, or previous, no, pre previous to them chopping it uh, in, in, in supporting the um, in supporting the hospital chaplaincy. And this was, I was visited in Swift Current and it seems to be that this maybe is where it started because all of a sudden we were not able to access that list. And as far as um, funding for the, um, in Swift Current, the, the funding came from a different church and they paid for a chaplain from their from their budget or whatever and uh this was from a fundamentalist church and the so the united church has kind of got left out of it and we were supposed to go and um we were supposed to go and um ask him for the list. Now, what has changed since then? I noticed that um, Annette had posted something. Annette, can you put it back on there? She said that the minister ministerial funds the chaplain. Okay. Um, I would suggest then that the proposal would speak to all hospitals. As far as the being able to access lists, how do you contact people? How do you find out? So Shannon's just pointed out that the proposal speaks to the provincial budget and doesn't read for, so it'd be the general budget, not just the ones for the major cities. And we'll make sure that the letter that accompanies the proposal includes hospitals across the province. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Lorna, uh, okay, so <laughs> I've got a couple more hands pop up. Um, so it'll be after Emily Carr, we are done with comments. So it'll be, um, It'll be Lorna, Dave, and then 
Oh, Emily, where'd you go? Okay. Um, so Emily and then Dave Wally. Um, and then I'm going to have to cut off conversation. Lorna? Um, as, as we were working on the proposal, um, we were considering the, the, the needs of other hospitals across the province. Um, I was, when I was in Nippo and I was part of the spiritual care committee, but at that point there was support um, through the health region to, to offer that kind of support for the committee. Um, we had someone to talk about the issues and, and those are the kinds of things that need to be re-implemented across the country. Thanks, Lorna. Uh, Dave's put his hand down, so I'm going to uh, assume that he doesn't have to ask that question anymore. Thanks for your patience, friends. We are, like I said, we are over time for tonight, um, but you've all stuck around, um, which makes me very happy to see. Um, so friends, we are just starting the work that we are, we've, we've committed to. Um, it is such a joy to be in this place, to see you all Brady Bunch squared in front of us, um, where we can see each other in a virtual way. Um, and I am, I'm deeply grateful that you are spending your weekend with us here in the church, doing churches, church work, and being the people of God, trying to bring about God's dreams for this world. We are a team, and I am thankful for each of you for being here. So go into your night, and may it hold the rest and rejuvenation that your body, soul, and mind needs in order to be ready to take on the tasks that we have ahead of us tomorrow, the tasks of worshiping together, of being community together, and doing the work of the church together. We've got this. You've got this. And I am thankful for each of you being here on this time. It's blessings to your night, friends, and I'll see you tomorrow morning around 9.30. Good night. Good night. Good night all. Good night. You want to stay on for a sec, Don, and we'll just figure out the screen stuff. That's what I was hoping. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll stay on. Maybe that this account is acting a bit different. <clears throat> Can't, can't remove people because it's the uh, same link. Oh, there's cool. Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hi, sorry. I just, I heard that Dawn was still on and I thought if you don't mind. Hi, Dawn. I'm Hi. Shelly. We've been, thank you so much. Um, we're just at the last minute getting a couple more um, participants for our closing worship for tomorrow. Um, and we've had a suggestion that there is one one list that we probably should have on the screen that might be um, better for people to see it if they can. So I'm really sorry, but can, is it, can I send you a short PowerPoint tonight? Without a doubt, go ahead. It, and it, just tell me if you want to just, is it a substitution or an addition? Uh, it's an addition. It's in our order of service, but we were not intending to have it on the screen. But it, it was suggested for various reasons that we should have the list on the screen. It's, it's the list of the communities that we'll be covenanting with. Okay, send it as an addition, or if you want to take your, your words already you have and add it into that PowerPoint presentation. 
then we can just stop the presentation at that point too. Either way, it works both ways. Okay, because at that we didn't have any of the any of our wording on the screen. On no, the you screen. had that hymn, right? Yeah, open my heart. And you had me sharing the words to open my heart, right? No. Why not? Uh, just a minute. No, I'm, that's a different. I'm getting you confused here. Pardon me. Just hang on. That's okay. I know you've been talking to lots of people. Okay. So uh, you're you're at the uh, three fifteen. 